Priming your miniatures is essential to get a good outcome when painting miniatures. It seems simple, but in fact, a lot of things can go wrong. In this video, I'm going to tell you exactly how to prime or spray your miniatures, what to look out for to get the best results, and how to go about it if you're doing it for your first time. Even if you have primed a lot of times before, I might have a few tips for you to make it easier. Hello YouTube people, if you're out there, welcome. My name is Peter Tubor and this is Age of Miniatures. Today I'm going to tell you about priming or spraying your miniatures. In essence, there are two ways to prime your miniatures really. And the third one, which is really bad, so I suggest not doing that. The way most people prime their miniatures is by using a rattle can. This is because it's an easy, quite cheap solution um, that can give you quite a good result. All you need is a rattle can. Preferably you will want something that is designed for miniatures. Uh, you can use super cheap stuff, um, but you will get mixed results and I do not recommend it unless it's for science. I use quite a lot of different brands, but um, nowadays I mostly use the Citadel uh, ones made specifically for contrast paint, and that is because they give a smooth finish. So I really like that. For other stuff, this one is also pretty good. I will leave links down below if you want to check some of them out and give me some kills. <laughs> The other solution is to use an airbrush, and that is a fantastic way of doing it if you got an airbrush. But most people, well, they don't. And then I would just say go with a rattle can, it's perfectly fine, I do it this way most of the time. So the third option is using what they call a brush on primer. That just means that you take your miniature and you brush on the primer. And that is not very good. You will leave brush strokes galore and you will never achieve a nice thin even coat. Yeah, just don't do it. So why should you even bother priming your miniatures? Well. If you don't do it, which is possible and, well, not really, it's pretty crap. What you will find is that when you try to put on the first layer of paint on your unprimed miniatures, you can see it from the way that the paint flows onto the miniatures. It will sort of pull away from the area that you have just painted and sort of clump together in these weird, messy areas. If you really, really, really want to paint without priming a miniature, you need to do it with very thick coats. And that's not the way to do it. So if you want to use good thin coats on your miniatures, you have to have a primer to make sure that it bonds, to make sure that the paint sticks on the area that you paint. So priming is just essential. What you don't want is to primer to sort of mess up your paint job. So you want it smooth. So no speckles, no small particles showing up, just a clean coat. We prime our miniatures to make sure that the paint sticks on the miniature where we painted, but also because the layer underneath your first layer will show through the translucent acrylic paint that you paint miniatures with. So if you paint directly on the gray plastic, the gray will show through. And that can be okay to have gray showing through, it's a perfectly fine way of doing it. But maybe you want a bit more help with showing the colors that you want. So um, that is also a reason to, to prime, is to use the primer in our process of painting. The color of primer is pretty important in terms of how you are going to paint your miniature. 
In the old days, in the dark ages of the miniature painting, everybody primed their miniatures black. It was the way to do it. This was when shades did not exist, but we only had inks. And inks were really not, not superb. For beginners, if you knew what you were doing, you could achieve some good results. But you could mess up a miniature really quickly. So a way of showing or a way of shading and making shadows on a miniature was to use black as a primer and have that show through in some areas. And if you have ever tried to paint a vibrant light colors on a black primer, well, you know the pain of painting in the dark ages. So if you are a beginner, I suggest not priming with black, but priming with gray, white, or maybe even the primary color that you're going to paint the miniature with. That is because it will be much easier for you to achieve a clean result. If you prime with black, you have to maybe do four thin layers of red before you can show red. But if you do it with white or gray, you might only need one to two thin coats. And also remember, if you want to paint with the contrast paint, it is preferred that you, you prime with light colors. You can go without the two contrast paints, the gray sear and the red bone. These are good, but not necessary for using the contrast paint. They have sort of um, a more shiny finish to it. I really like the red bone, but you can use other white colors these just achieve a very nice finish compared to some of the others. So for beginners, grays or whites. I do not really use the colored primers. I think they are annoying to work with, but you can try it out. But what is your experience with primers? Which one do you prefer? And what sort of tricks do you have to make sure that you prime perfectly every time? Comment down below with your suggestions for other beginners. Okay, so let's get into the actual how-to of priming your miniatures. The first step is to make sure that your miniatures are clean for mold lines and you have them assembled and ready to be primed. I usually just assemble all of the miniatures in a unit or uh, in a warband or in a blood ball team or whatever. I assemble them totally and then put them on the bases and I prime them. So they're ready to go. So that's what we have here. It's a, a Skaven team and they are ready to be primed. What you need is something to put them on. This here is, um, looks like some Warhammer box. And that's pretty good because I can hold it up and I can spray while I sort of move the miniatures around. And that's, uh, that's pretty good because most of the time you're gonna miss some areas underneath if you're sitting them on the ground and just priming them from the top. So you want to get them up here and have a good look and spray. This is a perfectly good solution, but as you can see, the miniatures will sort of bubble around and if it is just slightly windy, it will blow away and everything will be a mess. If you want to use a box solution, I recommend getting some sticky tack and putting it underneath the bases. You just lump it, lump, 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 underneath the base, and you press it down like this. So what that will achieve is that that guy, he's not going anywhere because of the sticky tag underneath. So you just lump it underneath all of the bases and put them on a box, and you are ready to prime. If you are going to magnetize your bases Anyway, I recommend another solution. What I have here is just a metal bar. I got a small handle so I don't prime my hands while doing it. Underneath these bases here, I got some magnets. These are a magnetic sheet like this. You can also use rare earth magnets underneath your bases, but uh, whatever you got, they need to be magnetized and if they are you can just put it on your metal thingy. And now I can go out and prime this 
while moving it up and down, up and down. I will use this most of the time because I want my bases magnetized because I use a magna rack system for transporting. You can see what I mean down below in the links. I also use it for my miniature paint handle, which makes it a lot easier to quickly snap in and out on what I want to paint when I paint. That was step two, finding something to put your miniatures on. Step three, we need to go outside. But before we go outside, um, you need to make sure that the weather is good enough for priming your miniatures. And this is where things can go really wrong. Because some of you live in hostile environments where people are not supposed to live. So for example, you could live in an area where the humidity is always too high to prime. Or you could live in an area where it is always too hot to prime. So if you live in that sort of environment, maybe you do need to get an airbrush. But if you live in an area where people can actually live, priming with a rattle can is perfectly fine. The reason we need to go outside is because the rattle can stuff, it is not good for breathing. Please do not just open a window and spray out because it is not healthy. So we need to go outside to prime. So what is the perfect weather? The perfect weather for priming is when the paint can hit the surface of your miniatures and you can get a clean result. That means two things. Neither too hot or too cold and the humidity must not be too high. What can happen if it is either too hot or too cold is that the paint coming out of the spray can can sort of frost on its way and it can speckle your miniatures. So you have sort of small weird flakes on the miniatures. That is not what you want. Also, you should make sure that the rattle can is hot enough when you go outside. You can leave it on the radiator for a bit or, I don't know, put it in your pants. What are too humid and what is too hot and what is too cold is definitely something that we need more science in. So if you got some data about when it is perfect or when it is too hot or when it is too cold or when the humidity is too high, post it down below and maybe we compile some data and make a cool study about it. So before we go outside, we have sort of a, a nice hot can. And what you need to do is make sure and shake it, shake it, shake it. A minimum of one minute shaking and shaking it while you prime is what I would suggest. So get shaking. When you get outside, think about the direction of the wind. When you spray, it will burst out with paint and nasty toxic stuff. And you don't want to get it in your face. Make sure that you spray in the direction of the wind so it will blow away from you. Sweet. You got the direction of the, the wind. You got some miniatures on a thing you can spray on. You got a can, you got perfect weather. Everything is sweet. So what do you need to make sure that you do? You need to prime 20 to 30 centimeters away from the miniature. What I would do is line up the miniatures so I maximize the paint that I use. When I prime like this, the, the paint that does not hit the first one will hit the second, second one and the third one and maybe the fourth one. So I maximize the usage of the primer. What you need to do is spray in short bursts, like pssst, pssst, pssst. Shake, 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 shake. Spray. When is enough primer enough? Because you don't want too much on there. If you want to paint with contrast, you need to get all of the miniature covered. Because if not, uh, the contrast paint will sort of be weird. If you're not painting with that, and if you're not planning on using the primer as sort of uh, something you will see on the finished miniature, you can just lightly prime it. Because what you will need is just primer that the paint will, s will stay on. It's a bit of a preference thing. I have gone from priming all the way, all of the miniature to not priming very much to now I'm back to priming all of it because I use the white color as a way to speed up painting. When you're done, 
Remember not to touch with your fingers or your tongue the miniatures after you have primed them because what you will get is a fingerprint on the, the primer and that is not good. That is also why I use sort of a handle to make sure that I do not need to touch them because if I have to turn them around by touching them well, it's gonna go ugly. I would just leave them to dry out in the sun. Sweet. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe. That would mean quite a lot to me. I have a lot more beginner videos coming up. Subscribe!